We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Aleph from the Beis Maseches Kiddushin. This is Kiddushin Daf Seventy One B. On the previous summit, there was a contradiction in terms of Eretz Yisrael. Is there an automatic presumption of kashrus, or is there an automatic presumption of psul? And the Gemara says it's not difficult. Kan lahasiyoisha, kan lahotzisha. It depends if you're talking about getting married to a woman. It depends if you're talking about divorcing or forcing someone to divorce a woman. Rashi says lahasiyoisha, meaning to say, if a person is going to marry a woman of Eretz Yisrael, stama boy bedika. If it's tam, if there's no presumption. That that this family is kosher, so you have to do some kind of investigation. However, if we're going to force him to divorce, meaning he already married her, just because it's a Stam family, that's not a reason to force them to divorce. That's what it means. Here we're talking about forcing him to divorce from this woman. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, anyone who speaks, meaning to say he speaks Babylonian, he speaks it with the Babylonian accent, so then you're allowed to marry for him a woman, meaning to say, you can assume that this person is from Bavel and he does not have flawed lineage. And the Gemara says, Vo'idna, but nowadays the Iko Ramoy, where you have people who are swindlers, Chayshinan, so then already we are concerned that maybe the person is just acting like he's from Bavel, but he's not actually from Bavel. And the Gemara continues, Ziri have come ishtamit mine de Rabbi Yochanan. Ziri was trying to escape from Rabbi Yochanan, he was trying to avoid Rabbi Yochanan. To have Yomar Lein Sibrati, because Rabbi Yochanan would always say to him, I want you to marry my daughter. Rashi says, Nesib Bratoi, marry my daughter. He didn't desire to marry her. Because she was from Eretz Yisrael. And he was from Bavel. And so therefore, he wanted to marry someone from Bavel, which was a higher status in terms of its lineage. And the Gemara continues, Yom Echad, one day, they were going on the road, meaning to say, Ziirin and Rabbi Yochanan were on the road. They came to some kind of crossing of water. And Rabbi Yochanan and he put Rabbi Yochanan up on his shoulder so he shouldn't get wet in this puddle of water. And he crossed him over this water. Amar Lei, Sir Rabbi Yochanan said to him, Apparently our Torah is kosher to you. You consider to me a ta- you consider me to be a Talmud Chacham, somebody that you have to respect. But Binson Lo Kasherin, but our daughters are not kosher to you. You don't want to marry my daughter. My Daitach, what are you thinking that you don't want to marry my daughter? If it's from the following Mishnah, because the Mishnah says, Asari Yuchsin, the Mishnah that we had here, here, Asari Yuchsin Olumi Bavel, that there were ten categories of lineage that came up from Bavel, Kahani Levie, the Kohanim Leviim, etc. Atu Kahani Levie of Yisraeli Kulhu Saliku, do you think all Kohanim Leviim and Yisraelim left Bavel to go to Eretz Yisrael? Of course not. Kihechi de Shtayer Mehani, Shtayer Nami Mehani, just like some were left from those categories, so too there must have been some of flawed lineage that were left in Bavel also. Don't think that Bavel is so much greater than Eretz Yisrael in terms of lineage. And the Gemara notes on this. This is to mitzay had amr belazer that Rabbi Yochanan. It escaped him that which Rabbi Lazar said, because Rabbi Lazar said, Lo Allah Ezra mi Bavel, Achasa Kesolas Nikia of Allah. Rabbi Lazar did not go up from Bavel until he made it like fine sifted flour and then he went up, meaning indeed Bavel really did have superior lineage because all of the flawed lineage went up with Ezra to Eretz Yisrael. And the Gemara continues, Ula Ikla le Pumbadisa levei Rev Yehuda. Ula went to Pumbadisa to the house of Rev Yehuda. Chazi le Rev Yitzchak bereid Rev Yehuda. He saw that Rev Yitzchak, the son of Rev Yehuda, the god of Velo Nasav, that he already Grown, he had already grown up, and he was not yet married. Amar Lay said to him, "My time alone commins of lay married to Salavre. Why is it that the master is not marrying off a woman to his son?" Amar Lay he said back to him, "Miodana mehechinsiv. Do I know from where I should get a wife for him to marry? Where am I going to find someone of unflawed lineage?" Amar Lay he said to him, "Atu anon miodinan mehechon kasinan. Do you think we know where we come from? Dioma mehanach tichsiv. Maybe we come from those that it's written in the pasuk, Nashim b'Tzion inu b'Sulos bara Yehuda. It says that the women in Tzion they were oppressed. They were taken by the non-Jews in the cities of." Yehuda, maybe we come from that lineage. Now maybe you'll say that if you have a non-Jew or an Evid that has relations with the Bas Yisrael, the child is still kosher. So that's not a concern. But maybe Vidilma, maybe maybe we come from the, those written in the following pasuk. The pasuk talks about the fact that there's something disgusting about their beds, and the question is, what is the pasuk they're referring to? And Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Chanina said on that. This refers to people who they urinate in front of their beds while they're naked. And the Gemara continues, And Rabbi Avo ridiculed that explanation of the Pasuk. He said, Is that what it means when the Pasuk goes on to say, That therefore they should be exiled at the head of 
all the exiles, Mishum de Mashtin and Mayim Bifnei Mitosayim Arumim, just because they urinate in front of their beds when they're naked, Yiglu Barosh Kolim, they should be the first to be exiled. El Amr Rabbi Avo, rather Rabbi Avo says, Elu B'nai Adam Shaochlin V'shosin Zeh Mzeh, what the Pasuk actually refers to is these people that they eat and drink with one another, Umadbikin Mitosayim Zubazu, Umachlifim Neshosayim Zeh Lozeh, and then they switch around their beds and they switch around their wives, Umasrichim Arsosim V'shich Vazera She'ena Shalehem, and the Shich Vazera, the semen that's not theirs, is, is ruining their own beds, meaning to say, essentially, it's real true Mamzerus. Maybe we come from Mamzerim. Amar Lehi said to him, so hey, Chinavit, so what should we do? How are we supposed to determine which family to marry into? Amar Lehi, so he said back to him, Zil Basr Shtikusa, you should go after the silence. Ki hai devad ki b'nei ma'arav, it's like the test that is done by those in the West in Eretz Yisrael. Ki minsu betrei b'hadi hadadi, when two people are arguing with one another, chazu hai minayu dekadim v'shasa, go see which one of them is the first to be silent. Amri hai miyuchas tvei, they say that that's the one that has the better lineage, that's the test that you should use to determine someone, to determine if someone is fit, that you should marry into their family. And the Gemara continues along the same lines, Amar Rav, Rav says, Shtikusei de Bavel, the silence of Bavel, Hainu Yichusa, that actually is the Yichus, that's how you determine the true lineage. The Gemara says, Ini, is that really true? Vo'ikla Rav, Uvodak Bahu, but Rav went and he did do some kind of investigation. My lab, Yichusa, wasn't he investigating the actual lineage? And the Gemara says, Lo, no, Bishtikusa, he was investigating based on silence. This is what he was saying to them. See if the person is silent or if they are not silent. And in terms of the parentheses that we skipped over, so some have the gear, so we have in the parentheses, Levei Bar Shofi Chala, that Rav went to the house of the son of the vinegar strainer. That's the family that he investigated. The Mesoras Hashas notes that the Girs of the Aruch, Girs of the Aruch, Levei Shichla Pei Rashi Mishbocha, his Girs is Levei Shichla, it's the name of a particular family. In any case, again, Rav investigated this family, and the Gemara ultimately says he investigated the family to see if they were silent instead of arguing. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, Rav Yehuda says that Rav says, Im Risa Shnei Bnei Odom Shem Ezgarim Zebazef, you see two people that they're fighting with one another, Shem Etz Psul Yesh Be'echon Mehen, there must be some kind of a Psul, some kind of a disqualification in one, in one of them, Ve'in Manichin O Soli Dovek Echon Bechaver, and we don't allow that one should cling to his friend, meaning that HaKadosh Baruch Hu prevents these families from marrying one another, because one of them has flawed lineage. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. Amr Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Im If you see two families that are fighting with one another, one of them has some kind of a disqualification. And again, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't allow one to cling to the other. And the Gemara continues, Amr Rapapa Saba Mishmei de Rav, Rapapa Saba said in the name of Rav, Bavel, when we say the word Bavel, that means Berea. Bavel is considered healthy, meaning to say the lineage is not flawed. Mishon, Misa, when it says Meshon, that's Mesa, that's dead, that has a flawed lineage. They're all Mamzerim. Madai Cholen, Madai, Madai is considered sick, meaning to say most of them are okay, but a minority of sick people end up dying, a minority have flawed lineage. And finally, Elam Gosesis, Elam is like a Goses, that means someone who's so sick that they're almost surely going to die, and that's what the Gemara explains, Uma bin Cholen, the Gosesin, what's the difference between a Cholen and a Goses? Rov Cholen, the Chayim, most Cholen, they end up living, Rov Gosesim, Lemisa, and most Gosesim, they end up dying. And the Gemara said, uh, says, Ad Heichon Hi Bavel, until where? Where is the border of Bavel, again, in terms of lineage, etc.? Rav Amar Ad Nahar Ezek, Rav says, until the river Ezek, Ushmuel Amar Ad Nahar Yoni, and Shmuel says, until the river Yoani, Lael Bediglas Ad Heichon, and then up by the Tigris River, until where is it? Rashi explains what that means. Lael Bediglas Ad Heichon, Lamadnu Rechava Shebein Shnehan Aros, we understand the width between the two rivers, Viod Lahal and Michidekel Ad Nahar Ezek, Utsrichen Leida Orcha Kam, we, we want to know the length, meaning Le'el Bediglas Letzad Dorom Ad Heichon, meaning towards the south, how much is it going to be over there? Le'el Bediglas Ad Heichon, Rav Omar Ad Bagdo Viavna, Rav says until Bagdo Viavna, these are various places, Ushmuel Omar Ad Moshchani, and Shmuel says until Moshchani. V'lo Moshchani Bechlal, and the Gemara says, is Moshchani not included? V'yomar Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Omar Shmuel, didn't Rabbi Chia Bar Abba say that Shmuel said, Moshchani Harehi Kegola Liyuchs, and that Moshchani is like the exile, that actually refers to Pumbedisa, it's referred to as Gola in Rosh Hashanah, that's like Gola Liyuchs, and that should be included in Bovel. Ela Ad Moshchani, Moshchani Bechlal, the Gemara says, you're right, it means until Moshchani, but Moshchani is included. And the Gemara continues, Latachtis Bediglas Ad Hecha, to the bottom by Diglas, how much? Rashi says that means to the north. 
Rashi says, Latachtis bediglas sar hechel netzafan to the north, the Alsfas chidekel be mizrocha shel bavel on the boundary of the chidekel, the Tigris River, by the eastern side of bavel, at hechon orcha moshoch letzafan, until where does the length go if you're going towards the north? And so the Gemara says to that, Amar of Shmuel, of Shmuel says, At Afamya Tasa, until the lower Afamya, Tarti Afamya have, and there are two Afamyas, Chada Elisa Vechada Tasyasa, one is the upper one, one is the lower one, Chada Kashera Vechada Psula, one is Kasher, and one is Pasa, Luvain Chada Lechada Parsa, between the two of them is just a Parsa, Vechada Kapti Ahadadi, they're very strict with one another, they don't lend things to one another, Vafilu Nur Lomoshli, they won't even lend fire, Ahadadi, they won't, they won't even lend fire to one another, Vesimonech and the Nemanek, the the one that's puzzle is the one that speaks like the language of Meshon. We said above that Meshon is a place where everyone is puzzle. And the Gemara continues, Le'el bepras, upwards towards Pras, at Hecha, where's the border over there? Rashi says we're talking about the south over here. Rav Amar ad Akro de, Tolban, de Tolbakni, Rav says it's until the fortress of Tolbakni, U Shmuel Amar ad Gishra de Beipras, Shmuel says it's until the bridge by Beipras, Rav Yochanan Amar and Rav Yochanan says ad Mavoras de Gizma until the crossing by Gizma. Layit Abaye vitem Rav Yosef ad Rav, Abaye, and some people say Rav Yosef, they cursed Rav's opinion because he was so lenient in terms of lineage, in terms of the border, he stretched the border so far, and the Gemara says, Ad Rav Layet, Ad Shmuel Lo Layet. He cursed Rav. He didn't curse Shmuel. Shmuel's border goes even further. And the Gemara says, El Layet Ad Rav Ekol Shekain Ad Shmuel. He cursed Rav's opinion. Certainly, he cursed Shmuel's opinion. Vibai Sam, if you want, I could say Liolam Ad Rav Layet Ad Shmuel Lo Layet. Really, he cursed Rav and not Shmuel's opinion. Vigishur de Beipras, and it could be the bridge of Beipras. Letasoy Havakoy was actually below, so it did not stretch further. And we will take a look at two of the earlier Rashi's over here at Hechon Hibavel until where is Bavel Liaches, meaning in terms of Yichus, in terms of lineage, Ad Nahar Ezek, Ad Nahar Yoani, until the river Ezek, until the river Yoani. And Rashi says, Lefioinian near it appears from reading the Gemara, Shabavel Bein Shnei Naharos Gedolim, that Bavel is located between two large rivers, Chidek Elupras, that's the Tigris and the Euphrates River, Matsiyam Osa Beinayam Zemen Amizrach Vezemen Amayrev, one is in the east and one is on the west. On a map, they actually run somewhat diagonally. And they go from the south to the north. And the end of the Euphrates, it pours into the Tigris. Everything you, all of this you can learn from the description here in the Gemara. And Rashi says further, Eretz Yisrael b'deroma shel bavel. Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael is towards the south of bavel. Tichsev mitzafen tifta chara talks about the north. Kilomar bavel mitzafen. It always refers to bavel as if it's in the north. They say that the way to travel from Eretz Yisrael to bavel was through the north due to the mountains. So it could be that's what that's referring to. O pras yored Eretz Yisrael bavel and pras goes down, meaning the Euphrates River goes down from Eretz Yisrael to bavel. Kid amar bialma mitra b'marav asad arav pras, like we say. If there's rain in the west, that's referring to the rain in Eretz Yisrael. So the witness to that is the Euphrates River. The Kaboy Gemara, and so the Gemara is asking Masha Bein Beis Hanaharas, the land that's between the two rivers, Pshita Lon de Bavelhi. That's obvious that it's Bavel. But if you're going from outside of the Tigris, until how far does that width of Bavel extend? And so that's what Rav says until the river Ezek. Shmuel says until the river Yoani. And again, that's the Hemshech, that's the continuation of the Gemara in terms of the exact boundaries of Bavel. And we will take a look over here at a map of Bavel during the times of the Gemara. Now Rashi understood that these rivers actually flow from the south to the north. However, the article points out that in reality, the rivers actually flow from the north towards the south. And that's why this map is actually somewhat the opposite of the way that Rashi would paint the picture. For example, Rashi says, Le'el Bediglas. Le'el Bediglas would mean at the beginning of the flow of the river, referring here to the Tigris River. Rashi understands that to mean Litzad Dorum, towards the south, because again, according to Rashi, the river begins to flow at the south and it flows towards the north. And so therefore, all of these cities that are plotted on the map, Rashi would probably have somewhat the opposite. For example, over here, Upper Apamya, Lower Apamya, we have on this map, which is following Rabbi Tam, that's on the lower side of the map, that's on the southern side, Rashi would have the opposite, because again, according to Rashi, these rivers are flowing in the opposite direction. Rashi also said that the rivers meet at the north side, so they flow from south to north, and then the two rivers meet at the north, and again, on the map, it's actually the opposite. The rivers actually flow from the north towards the south, and they meet towards the south. 
Rashi, again, as Rashi himself pointed out, Rashi did not actually see, uh, did not have a direct tradition of, in terms of how these rivers looked and how the area looked. This is just what Rashi was gathering from the Gemara. So Rashi essentially paints the picture in the opposite fashion as Rabbi Tam. This map follows the position of Rabbi Tam, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Bey's Amr Aleph.